a charge q is placed at each of the opposite corners of a square another charge small q is placed at remaining two corners of the square if the net electrical force on capital q is zero then the ratio q by q is four options are given minus two root two minus one one and minus one by two so we have to find the this ratio capital q by small q okay as for the question a square is there we can assume its side as a okay the side of the square is a and then we have to place two charge capital q on two opposite corners of the square so i have taken these two corners and the remaining two corners yes another charge small q is placed that is also i have done this then so what is asked in the question is if the net electrical force on capital q is zero so we can take either of these two charge okay the net force acting on any of these two charges zero so we have to find the total amount of force acting on this charge due to the remaining three charges okay so after that we have to equate that value to zero then we should find that value from that equation q by q ratio from that equation so in order to find the force we have to find the distance between these two charges that is nothing but diagonal of the square is equal to root 2 times of its side okay now we have to identify the direction of force acting on this charge q so let us consider these two charges so i, I am assuming these two are positive charges so this will try to push this upward direction so the force due to this small q on this capital q will act in upward direction okay so let's name that value as f1 and the force due to the uh, one on the left side okay one on the left side that will also tries to push the capital q towards the right side so we can call that as f2 and the force due to the third charge at the diagonally opposite corner we can take that value as f3 now we have the three force vector so as per the question we have to find the net electrical force and equate that to zero first we have to find the individual force value okay we can apply the coulomb law so coulomb law is f equal to k times q1 q2 by r square so instead of r we have a here the distance between two charges a okay and one charge value is q and the remaining charge value is small q so i just used that coulomb law here and uh, for f2 we have to consider these two charges and the distance is a and the distance between them is a okay and we will get the f2 value like this and f3 value we have to choose these two charge and the distance between these two is root 2 times of a so f3 equal to k times q1 value is q and q2 value is also capital q and the distance between them is root 2 times a square so in this one you can combine these two uh, q's into q square uh, if you square at the denominator so you will get 2 times of a square square and root will get cancelled each other and remaining you will get only a square in the denominator you will get a value like this k q square by 2 a square okay so we found the three forces on acting on the charge so our intention is to find the total electrical force acting on this charge and equate that to zero then the total force is given by the sum of the individual force this is principle of superposition since these force are a vector quantity we cannot add them simply like that so we, we have to consider the direction also uh, we can see from the diagram f1 and f2 are acting in the two different direction so we have to combine them into a single direction so that's why we are going to use the um, parallelogram law of vector addition so you can see and f1 and f2 act in two direct two different direction so we have to combine this f1 and f2 into a single vector that is fr vector okay now we are to, going to find the value of fr using the parallelogram law of vector addition let's apply that formula so you will get fr equal to f root of f1 square plus f2 square plus 2 f1 f2 cos 90 here the 90 indicates the angle between two vectors f1 and f2 okay if two vectors are acting at an angle theta apart we can use this formula to combine them as a single vector okay now substitute the values cos 90 value is 0 so the term will be gone and the remaining you will left with f1 square plus f2 square instead of f2 you can replace f1 because the value of f1 and f2 are same okay we can use the f1 so i just replace with the f2 with the f1 then you can directly add these two you will get 2 f2 2 f1 square and uh, square and root get cancelled you will you will be left with root 2 times of f1 we can use the value of f1 here value of f1 is k q by a square okay 
so this is the combined value of f1 and f2 vector okay then we should add the result of the third one so i am writing this equation again here instead of f1 and f2 i can write the fr okay so i have already combined f1 and f2 into a single vector that vector is fr and keeping the f3 as it is i am substituting the value here let's substitute the value here so value of f net is 0 value of f net is 0 that is given in the question and fr value uh, we found just before that so root 2 kq by a square and f3 value is kq square by 2a square now i am going to take this term to this side so that will become negative then you can cancel the like terms on both sides okay a square and a square will get cancelled then uh, ca this q and one q on this side will be get cancelled and k and k get cancelled so you will be left with minus q by 2 equal to root 2 times of small q so just rearranging this equation so you will get k equal to minus 2 times root 2 q but our intention is to find the capital q by small q so we have to take the small q term to the denominator okay so just rearrange it you will get the q by q ratio is minus 2 times of root 2 okay and this value is in option a so we have to remember a thing while combining these three vectors you have to consider the direction of the vectors also uh, you can see from the diagram f1 and f2 are not acting in the same direction so we have to use the parallelogram law of addition so after combining f1 and f2 we will be left with only two vectors that is fr and f3 now if you take these two vectors these two are directly acting in the same direction okay they are acting in the same line these two are collinear vector so whenever two vectors are collinear or parallel you can add them directly each other without using the law okay so while combining f1 and f2 uh, we have to consider the angle between the two vectors okay because those two are acting in different direction when combining fr and f3 you can directly add them together because those two are acting in the same line of action okay that is the only thing you have to remember